One of the biggest challenges for a web developer is to maintain asynchronous callback-based code. In Firebase, everything is real-time, so it only makes sense that we use the best reactive programming library out there, which is RxJS. In today's video, you'll learn about a brand new, officially supported library from Firebase called RxFire. We'll use it along with Stencil.js to compose full-stack reactive web components that can be used in any JavaScript framework or just in some plain HTML. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and grab the full source code from angularfirebase.com. Let's start by talking a little bit more about what RxFire is and when you would want to use it. The first thing I'll point out is that it's not a replacement for Angular Fire 2, so you want to continue using Angular Fire 2 in an Angular project. But it does provide a way for other frameworks to have a consistent implementation of Firebase with RxJS. So you can get really good control flow on your real-time streams, whether you're using Vue, React, Stencil, as we'll see later in the video, or just plain JavaScript. I recommend taking a look at the RxFire samples repo so you can see it in action in a variety of different settings. And another really cool thing about this library is that it doesn't take the Firebase SDK as a hard dependency, which opens the door for lazy loading. The Firebase SDK is pretty large, so if you can get it out of your critical path, you'll get much quicker page loads for your progressive web app. So what I want to show you today is how we can take this library and use it with a web component tool like Stencil.js to build a reusable to-do list that you can just drop into any other app that's already using Firebase. There's a ton of potential here to build web components that get reused across multiple applications. For example, you might build a chat client that is similar to Intercom, or maybe you just want to have a consistent login button that you can easily share across multiple web applications. There's just tons of potential there, but it's time to get moving on to the code. I'm going to start by initializing Stencil. If you're not familiar with Stencil, don't worry, it's a very approachable tool for building web components. I'm going to give it a dedicated video in the near future, but it should feel pretty comfortable for you if you're an Angular or React developer. We just run npm init Stencil, and then we select a project name, and we'll pick the starter component project, which is just for one-off web components. If we open up the project, we should see a single component in the source directory. That's where we're going to build out our to-do list. For now, we can run npm run start from the command line, and that will serve our web component in the browser. It has some basic text for now, but we'll build this out into a web component that can handle user authentication and also the creating, reading, and deleting of data in the Firestore database. If we look at how this component is used across multiple frameworks, you can see that it's just a script tag along with a custom element that we can declare in the DOM. At the end of the video, we'll build this component and then we'll install it into an existing Angular project. But for now, we need a couple extra things in our Stencil project, including RxFire, Firebase, and RxJS. We could initialize Firebase directly in our web component, but I want my component to be agnostic to the Firebase project, meaning you could just drop this component into any Firebase project, it should pick up the config, and work seamlessly from there. So to do that, I'm just going to follow the web setup instructions that you can find in the official docs and we'll only be using Firestore and user authentication. Then in the script tag, we'll just go ahead and call Firebase initialize app with our credentials, and then we'll also go ahead and configure Firestore here as well. Now we'll go ahead and jump into our Stencil web component, and you'll notice that it looks pretty similar to an Angular or React component. It has these prop decorators, which allow you to pass in information from the HTML directly, similar to the input decorator in Angular. But the decorator that we want to use is state, and this property will re-render the component anytime its value changes. And that's actually a really nice mechanism for working with RxFire, because every time our observable emits some new data or the data changes, it will re-render the component in the UI. This component will have two different stateful objects which represent our real-time streams. One is the to-do list, which will be in Firestore, and the other one is the user, which is the user authentication account then we're not going to actually import Firebase in this component because we don't want it as a hard dependency. So I'll go ahead and reference the types for Firebase just for IntelliSense up at the top. And the first thing we'll do with RxFire is observe the user's authentication state. AuthState is just a function that returns an observable, and that observable will either emit null if the user's not logged in, or it will emit their user auth account if they are logged in. Then we have a bunch of different functions for working with Firestore. If we want to just get the raw data from the collection, we can use collection data. Or if we want more fine grain control, there's a number of different methods that allow you to observe specific changes to the documents in your database. The first thing we want to do in our component is observe the user's auth state. 
Stencil has a lifecycle hook called component will load, which is roughly the equivalent to ng on init in Angular. So we've initialized Firebase outside of this component, so I'm going to declare a global variable for Firebase and then type it to the Firebase app. This step is just so we get IntelliSense with our TypeScript in VS Code. Then going down to the component will load lifecycle hook, we're going to subscribe to the auth state of the Firebase user, and then the value that this observable emits will be the state of the user property on our component. So now whenever this observable emits something, it will re-render the component based on the logic that we have down here in our render function. For right now, we'll just inspect that we actually have a logged in user by JSON stringifying the user object. Then our component will automatically reload when we save it, and you'll notice that it says hello world null. That's because we're not logged in. To fix that, we'll go ahead and add a login and logout button to our component. I'm going to be using Google Auth, so make sure you have that enabled on the Firebase dashboard. First, we'll set a variable called provider that is a new instance of the Google Auth provider. Then we can say Firebase Auth sign in with pop-up, and that's all we need to do to get logged in to a Google account. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and create a logout method. That's just a single line of code saying Firebase Auth sign out. The next thing we'll want to do is rewrite this render function so that if the user's logged in, we show them the to-do list and a sign out button. Otherwise, we show them the sign in with Google button. In TSX, we can handle events such as clicks by saying on click, followed by brackets and the method that we want to call, in this case, login. If the user's logged in, we'll go ahead and show them their display name, and we'll also give them a button to log out. If we go back to the app now and click the login button, you'll see that Firebase does its thing with a pop-up window for Google authentication. Then when that auth state changes, it will re-render the component to show the user's display name and the logout button. So basically, we just created a Google login web component that can be used anywhere with any framework. But I want to take things a step further and build a to-do list for this user in Firestore that is only associated with this user. And this is actually really easy to do thanks to RxFire. So I'm bringing in the switch map operator from RxJS, then I'm making a reference to a Firestore collection that contains all the to-dos for all of our users. We'll get to the database in just a minute, but what I'm going to do is save a user property on every to-do item, then I'll query it based on the user's authentication UID. So we'll go ahead and create an observable that's based on the auth state, and then we'll switch map to a different observable of the collection in Firestore. When we run switch map, it's kind of like being inside of subscribe, so we'll have access to the user object. At that point, we can make a query on the reference that we set earlier. So we'll create a query that says get all to do's where the user is equal to this user's user ID. Then we can get all of that collection's data unwrapped by just calling collection data with this query object. And then the final step is just to subscribe to this observable, and then we'll set its value equal to the to do state on the component. And the last thing we'll do is go down to our render function and then just display it as JSON for now to make sure that it's working. Right now it displays an empty array because we don't have any data in our database, so let's go ahead and change that. The beauty of this setup is that our component will re-render anytime our real-time data changes. We can demonstrate this by creating our to-dos collection, and then we'll create a document in that collection where the user property is equal to this user's ID. I'm just copying the user ID from the UI over to our document, and as soon as we click save on this document, it will be updated in the UI in our stencil component on the left. And any changes that happen to this document, no matter where it comes from, will trigger this component to be re-rendered. Then just to prove that our relational data is set up properly, I'm going to create another document, but this time give it a user that's different than the currently authenticated user. You'll notice that nothing renders in the UI because our query is based on only the to-dos for the currently logged in user. Another thing RxFire does is it tries to make life easier for you. For example, a common need is to have the document ID mapped to every document in the collection. Normally that takes a bunch of JavaScript mapping, but in RxFire we can just pass in the field that we want the ID mapped to, and it will return that data for us without any additional work. Now we can go back into our render function, and this time we'll loop over the array of documents and map each one of them to a list item. And you'll notice that I have a property on this list called task ID, which is what I defined in the collection data method above. And the reason you give it your own custom property name instead of just ID is in case you already have an existing ID that you don't want to overwrite. 
I've also added a create and delete method here, which you can find in the full source code. And our finished product looks something like this. It's not very pretty from a design standpoint, but it's a real time full stack web component, which is pretty impressive on its own. But I promised you that we'd be able to run this web component anywhere. And the first step in that process is to run a production build and stencil. The stencil project itself sets you up to build an NPM package that you can either install locally or publish on NPM. After our build is finished, we'll go ahead and copy the path to this project folder. And then we can use that path to install an NPM package in a completely different project. I happen to have an existing Angular project that has Angular Fire 2 and Firebase already installed in it. But I'd like to reuse my stencil to-do list because I've already written this code and I don't want to have to rewrite everything in Angular. So let's see if we can make our stencil component work in this Angular project. The first thing you'll do is run npm install in the Angular project and have it point to the path of your stencil project. If you didn't change any of the defaults, that should resolve to a package of my component version 0.0.1. In Angular, we have to enable the custom element schema. So you can import that from Angular core, then add that to the schema's array in the app module. The final step is to bootstrap the custom elements in this project by calling define custom elements, which is provided by stencil. We can handle that in the main TS file, so we'll import define custom elements from my component, and then we'll also register Firebase on the window object so it's available there as well. And lastly, we'll call define custom elements and pass it the window. At this point, we can use our web component anywhere in this Angular project as if it was just a regular DOM element. I'm just going to go ahead and declare my component in the app component HTML, and we'll see what happens. As you can see here, we have our login with Google button, and once we log in, we get our to-do list from the database. So hopefully this video gave you a decent introduction into how easy it is to work with real-time streams when you combine RxJS with Firebase. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there, but I have a lot more content planned for RxFire and Stencil in the future. Let me know what you want to see next in the comments, and consider upgrading to a pro membership to get access to all kinds of exclusive content. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.